Hello, welcome to another open topography tutorial. First, this video will cover how to create a 3D visualization using Pottery. Second, I will demonstrate how to use the Pottery tools as we apply them in the Pottery treasure hunt. What is Pottery? Pottery is a free open source WebGL based point cloud renderer for large point clouds. Let's look at the Open Topography website. First, we will need to find some point cloud data that we can visualize in 3D. Let's go to Data, Point Cloud, scroll down, find an area that might interest you. I'll choose Mapping the Kaibab Plateau. Now let's scroll down and select some data to visualize in the Kaibab Plateau. To get a better look, I'll zoom in on the area. Pleasant Valley looks interesting. Let's visualize that. First, I'll select a region over here, and then come over and choose a bounding box. If I continue to scroll down, it'll tell me exactly how many points I have in my bounding box area. It is important that I generate a point cloud, but in box 3A, I do not need to create a tin. That'll save me a little bit of time. In box 5A, I need to select generate a 3D point cloud browser visualization for this is Pottery. To scroll down farther, I need to create a job title, a job description, and then put in my email so I can get a notification that the job is complete. Let's submit. You now notice the job is working off-site. This will take a moment. I will mention here that I am using the Google Chrome web browser. You may experience better or worse performance with other browsers. Once the job finishes processing, let's scroll down and click on our 3D point cloud. You can left click and drag your mouse to rotate the model. Right click and drag to pan the model across the screen. This concludes part one. Next, we'll cover this toolbar up in the top left as we go over the Pottery treasure hunt. These are the links to get the data to follow along in this tutorial. This first link, the Pottery point data, will load all four data sets in the Pottery browser. Uh, the second document is information to the course along with the treasure hunt documents. The first link will take you to Pottery and this is what you will see. If you click here in the top left, open up your toolbox and scroll down to samples, you'll see all four data sets are loaded right here for you. The second link takes you to the Open Topography website where you'll see the short course information. Uh, if you scroll down just a little, you'll see the treasure hunt documents are right here. Let's look at question one and two from the Pottery Treasure Hunt worksheet. Our first data set is in the Kaibab Plateau. That's starting point. Let's click here and then come across the canyon to the other side. You can either hold or click your desired point if you wish to add a third point of distance measurement. We can see it's approximately 3,300 meters wide. Second, I need to go to the top of my structure. You'll see the dashed line calculated at approximately 79 meters in this case. So let's say the Capitol building is about 80 meters tall. The display attribute. Let's do that. Not every model has RGB, but in this case, we do. I happen to know where the yellow car is, so by scrolling around and looking, I might be able to find it quickly. This is a good opportunity to explore navigation. As you can see, 
we found the yellow car. Now we need to make everything purple except the top of the Capitol building will be blue with a green tip. This is just to get you to practice using these different scene tools. Let's go to display attribute and back to elevation. Now we know three things. We need the color purple, green, and blue. This one looks like it might fit. Let's adjust our model slightly so we can get a better look. Now come play with these elevation range tools. You'll begin to notice we get a purple map and as we adjust the range. Now we can see the tip of the Capitol building is blue with a green tip. The first question for the Granite Dells data asks, how wide is the dam? Well, first we need to find the dam. There it is. After getting a good position, I'll come down to my tools and click distance measurement once again. I'll start on the left side of the dam. I can see it's maybe 76 meters wide. Now let's plot a topographic profile along the back side of the dam. I'll come over to my tools and select height profile. Similar to the distance measurement, I need to click my starting point. I can then drag across and click my end point. If I right click, it'll remove the selection. Now, come over to your toolbox. Make sure profile is selected here to get this option and select show 2D profile. It might take a moment to load, but you will see a 2D profile of the point cloud area you selected. On the boulder data, we are asked to remove the vegetation in the mountains and in the town. Let's move in to get a better look. We can see down here there's some trees and bushes as well as up on the mountains. To remove these, come over to the toolbox and select filters. Different point cloud data is classified in different ways. In this case, unclassified considers the vegetation in the mountains, and medium vegetation considers the vegetation in town. Now we've removed all vegetation. The next question asks, what is the area of the field at the stadium? First we need to find the stadium. Scroll around until you find it. And get a good angle that you think allows you to get a good area measurement of the field. Come back to your toolbox. Open your tools. And click on the area measurement tool. Here, we need to click various points around the area we wish to measure. With this selection, it's approximately 6,700 meters squared for the field. The last question asks, what are the angles between the centers of the three stadium buildings? Well, we've already found the stadium. Here's one building of consideration, building two and building three. This allows you to use the angle measurement tool in the toolbox. Click once. 
and approximately click the centers of the tops of each building. This is a way that you can visualize angles between structures. Thank you for watching this video tutorial on how to use pottery within open topography.